Africa and welcome to AU Talks. We are still on the campus of University of Lagos and today we are discussing the topic addressing curricular and quality issues in Nigeria. And we are very privileged to have the Director Academic Planning and former Director Quality Assurance of University of Lagos. Professor Obina L. Chupo. We'll go for a short break and when we come back we will start with our discussion. Stay tuned. A new dawn broke in 1962 when the University of Lagos was established. And 56 years on, higher education has never remained the same. We are in the office of the Director of Academic Planning at the University of Lagos. Thank you, Prof, and thank you for your time. Thank you, listeners. Yeah. Prof, we want to talk about quality issues and addressing curricula in Nigeria. In your opinion, how is the um, quality of um, curricula in Nigeria? Thank you very much. You know, the issues of uh, quality assurance has actually uh, crept into the higher education space following the increase in the demand for higher education. Um, currently in Nigeria, as you are aware, the number of private institutions has also uh, increase yeah. tremendously as well as those of the public higher institutions uh, therefore it has become imperative mm. to look at ways and means of uh, standardizing the guidelines for improving the curriculum and maintaining the quality of teaching and learning mm. in Nigeria the we always have the regulatory authority in the National Universities Commission that controls issues of uh, curriculum as well as that of quality assurance um, through the issuance of what we call the um, Nigerian Universities Commission minimum benchmark. Okay. Yeah. Benchmark of minimum academic standards, which we call BIMAS, okay. and that is issued for virtually all the programs, okay. and that stipulates the minimum benchmark. Just as it is a minimum, uh, the various uh, senate of the uh, individual universities are there to now have their own standards. Take for instance, in our own university here, irrespective of the minimum benchmark academic standards, we do not admit students who have, um, who need to combine certificates, for instance. That is, if you sit for the West African examination uh, certificate exams mm -hmm. at two sittings, we will not admit you at the University of Lagos. You need to come 
come in at one sitting, for instance. But some other universities still yeah, accept exception. two sittings to come in. Mm. Now, that's one. But that is with respect to external quality assurance issues. Yeah. Now, with respect to internal quality assurance issues, uh, each university is now being encouraged to set up quality assurance units mm -hmm. that monitors that. And um, so through accreditation programs, the National Universities Commission tries to accredit yeah. the programs of the various mm -hmm. uh, higher institutions with respect to program quality and institutional uh, accreditation. But the individual universities now have the sets and the standards, policies through which they maintain uh, their own quality assurance yeah, measures. Yeah, because with I wanted respect to, to ask about the harmonization since um, all of the universities subscribe to the NEUC. And so the standard is there. But are they harmonized to make it one that everybody will look through to the standard or everybody has their own way of doing things? No, it is uh, totally harmonized okay. because uh, the National Universities Commission has the overall control okay. for uh, accrediting programs. Mm -hmm. And even when you want to start off new programs, mm -hmm. so they are the ones that still um, undergo what they call resource verification and give approval for mm -hmm. the granting of new programs. Yeah. Now, with respect to our university, the University of Lagos here, for instance, um, we have the quality assurance unit that looks at monitoring the ways and means the implementation of the curriculum is being done across faculties and departments. Okay. How do we do that? We have what we call the teaching work plan, which is approved by the Senate. So at the beginning of each semester, yeah. the work plan is submitted to the Director of Quality Assurance, and it highlights the entire course content broken down into weeks and modules, giving you information on the lecturers that will be taking each course at each point in time. So it's broken down for an entire semester in two weeks and you know we have about 17, 17 weeks in a semester. Yeah. And then he also makes provisions for assessment in between. Yeah. So through that we're able to monitor how teaching and learning is taking place across the various departments. Okay. And um, on the issue of curriculum review, it's something that is done, it's done in a very systematic manner. Mm. It goes through the courses and programs committees across the faculties, yeah. as well as uh, the postgraduate board at the School of Postgraduate Studies. Um, we've just completed one, the, what we call the Professor Olo Kudejo report. Um, and that looked at all our programs, to see people submitted, made inputs into ways and means of uh, reviewing those curriculum in terms of content, mm. in terms of uh, pedagogy, in terms of relevance to national needs, and also in terms of um, bringing in entrepreneurship and innovation mm. into our programs. I'm sure that uh, when you spoke with the Vice Chancellor, yes. you would have uh, gotten information about the fact that uh, the graduates of the University of Lagos now are, uh, will be coming out with not only a degree, mm. certificate in the area of specialization, but they will also be coming up with an entrepreneurship certificate, yeah. which is a very well defined program that we have established through our entrepreneurship and innovation uh, center. It's a place you need to visit. Yeah, and we see have, and we saw there. what was going on over there. Yeah. We wanted to know what are some of the educational strategies that you have here in Unilag, because I know there are a lot, but maybe you can give us a few. 
Uh, educational strategies in what sense are you? Um, in terms of how um, you coordinate your um, curricula, how you put them together. Okay, well, the, at the University of Lagos, yeah, mm. the issues of curriculum is handled centrally through the uh, academic planning unit okay. of the university. And then it cascades down to the various faculties. And across the various faculties, you have what you call the faculty board of studies. And within each faculty, you now have what you call the courses and uh, uh, whatever committee, uh, courses and seminars committee, as we call them. Yeah. So it is from bottom to up approach. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing we do. So those things are developed within the framework of the department. It goes through the departmental committees, then gets into the faculty board, and there courses and ceremonies will consider it goes to the faculty board of studies mm. and then comes up to the academic planning unit. Yeah. Now, that was the meeting we had in the morning. The mm. academic planning unit of the university is chaired by the vice chancellor. Okay. And those submissions which have been vetted through the academic planning unit using the standard guidelines yeah. that we have will then go to that board. And that academic planning committee chaired by the vice chancellor, we have the deputy vice chancellors being member, the registrar, and some senate representatives from different faculties. Yeah. So they look at those programs. At the end of the day, they make a recommendation to senate. Mm. Then the senate of the university will mm. still go through those documents, interrogate them, and approved. if they so feel, it will now be approved. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. We would want to talk about the Africa Union's um, continental education strategy, which pushes for the STEAM education. Do you think that is the only way to Africa's development? Yeah, thank you very much. There's hardly anything you can say is the only way. Mm. Uh, nothing is impossible, and uh, uh, nobody is actually indispensable. Um, let me put it very lightly. Uh, Two days ago, you have uh, those of us who are into soccer. Okay. We would have enjoyed yeah. the soccer games we are during the UEFA Championship. Yeah. Yes, we are in Liverpool, was able to beat Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And yet, the hitman there, Mo Salah, yeah. was on the bench. The same thing happened again okay. with uh, Tottenham and Ajax. So what I'm saying in essence is that there's no only way. <laughs> now, science, technology is very key mm -hmm. in everything we are doing. And that is really the way to go because uh, technology is just an application of science. However, everything must not be achieved through the scientific approach. Exactly. In our own university here, we always have uh, visiting scholars all the way from uh, Harvard, from Cambridge, and they come here for things in the arts. Our creative arts department yeah. is very vibrant. So all the Nollywood movies that you're talking about, yeah. this is the home where you have the individuals that are breeding them. Mm. So issues of the arts is quite important. Culture is very key, for yeah. instance. Yeah. The sustenance of our languages, some of them are becoming extinct. Yeah. Here at the University of Lagos, we we'll still have uh, the Department of European Languages, we we'll have uh, mm. the African and Asian Studies Department that still tries to look at programs in that context. Yeah. May I also remind you that the University of Lagos is one of the foremost universities that started a degree program in Chinese studies. Okay. And look at where the world is going today yeah. in terms of economic development. Mm. So we do a one-to-one -one program. We had a start at the University of Lagos 
for the first year. Then they go to Suzhou University in China, spend two years there, and then come back to University of Lagos to get a degree in Chinese. So the very first set of uh, uh, students we are graduated last year, and they are there now, helping most of our businessmen yeah. that have to go to China, China with interpretation and all that. So. The, what I'm saying in essence, uh, coming back to your question, is that yes, STEM, as they started initially, yeah. but realizing that everything is not just about STEM, we are now beginning to talk about STEAM, S-T-E-A-M now, yeah, bringing in the arts into it. Uh, we also have uh, an institute of... Um, uh, what do they call it now? Um, African studies and the diaspora. Yes, we were there. You were there as yeah. well, yes. So we, are, we have uh, collaboration, very deep collaboration with the West Indies. Mm. And we are running a, a joint collaborative master's degree program in that regard. Yeah. So those are also other areas that are equally important. important. Yeah. So. I agree. At the stage of our development in Africa now, a lot of emphasis should be placed on science and technology. But that does not mean that that should be done at the expense of other, okay. other areas. Okay, so we'll go for a short break and when we we'll come back, we'll continue with our discussion. Stay tuned. In its effort towards converting knowledge to profit, the University of Lagos established the Entrepreneurship and Skills Development Center, which has, since its emergence, successfully partnered with world-class corporations such as Coca-Cola, LG, General Electric, and Lufthansa, among others. We're training our students to become creators of jobs. We need partnership with multinationals, we need partnership with many Nigerians, and partnership with federal government to begin to develop this school, I mean, these students inside the campus so that they can create their jobs. If national development and community service are crucial goals to be achieved by universities all over the world, then postgraduate education cannot be taken lightly, for it is at this stage that we see the results of the foundation laid at the nursery, primary, secondary and undergraduate levels. Welcome back. If you just tune in, this is A Talks, and we, we are with Professor Obin Chuku. Prof, before we went on the break, we were talking about how important STEAM is, but how we should also not neglect the other um, courses that we have, that we teach here. We want to take the question a little bit out of there and ask on curriculum that the curriculums we have now here, is it good to the point that when a student completes the university he or she becomes employable <laughs> well you see uh, that's a good question yeah. but you will also know the philosophy behind the programs we were running originally uh, some of those um, programs were not designed uh, no in such a, a manner as to allow the student to become an entrepreneur as soon as you graduate. But over time, we've been trying to um, move a classroom to practice. Most of the programs now have internship programs. Okay. And then you also have the student industrial work experience that goes along with it mm. to still take you very close to what you have in the real world and um, currently we're also reviewing our curriculum uh, to the extent that you're trying to bring in some of the 21st uh, generation um, skills critical thinking and uh, most of these other uh, skills soft skills that you require mm -hmm. to uh, survive in the real world of today. Now what we have is distance learning and we have online learning. And how do we ensure that these kinds, there's different methods of teaching 
it's of good quality because normally when people come out and they have a degree from a distance education we tend to have a different opinion on them how do we ensure what are some of the advantages and then the challenges of running such programs yeah yeah at the university of lagos here um we used to have or we commenced what we used to call the Correspondence and Open Studies Unit, KUSU, mm -hmm. in those days. From there, it metamorphosed into the Correspondence and uh, Open Studies Institute, KUSIT. Mm -hmm. Gradually, we now moved to what we call the Distance Learning Institute, which was just dealing with uh, um, distance learning. Now, over the years, mm. we are now going into the dis distance and open, open and distance learning mm. uh, programs where you are now having blended approaches to teaching. It's a very good thing because most of the people who require higher education cannot afford it. Secondly, in Lagos where we are, some of the workers here also require to uh, acquire higher education but they cannot do that while they are working yeah. so that's another avenue through which you have opportunities created for them to acquire higher education um, we have um, done a lot in our open and distance uh, learning institutes now um, most of the programs are now online, fully online, and you have uh, the facilitators and uh, uh, what do you call them now? Learning uh, instructors that assist them through that. Secondly, we used to have limited programs, but now we have extended that and increased the number of programs that are available so that people can have a number of choices. Yeah. Uh, for instance, we now have programs in public administration, we have programs in economics, we have programs in um, uh, accounting, uh, finance. Initially, it was only targeted to increasing the training for teachers. So we used to have only a lot of programs in uh, education, education, biology, mm -hmm. education, uh, uh, physics, mathematics. But you know, things are changing. Only today, we have also now looked at the other programs on early childhood education, which has been approved okay. by Senate. We, what we considered today was just the, the name change mm -hmm. to have a faculty of, um, sorry, a department of education at our distance learning institute. Mm -hmm. So, um, coming specifically to your question, that is a very good avenue to reach out to more of our, the students. Mm -hmm. And that's why at the University of Lagos, yeah, you have a population now that is almost uh, closing into almost about 59,000. When you add our undergraduate, our really postgraduate, the distance learning institute students, and the ones we call the Institute for Continuing Education, mm -hmm. uh, ICI programs are coming in the evening. We have also taken a number of measures in ensuring that you don't have that stigmatization. Mm. So as much as possible, um, we use the same teachers that are teaching the students to teach on those programs. But you know, they also have to undergo some form of training to enable them now change the mode of uh, teach rather than a face-to-face format. They now use the open and distance learning format. Mm. Um, the age barrier that used to be there before, it was only those who were above 25 or 26. It has now been brought down. Now you have younger people too who are coming into the programs. Mm. And then we're also looking at the possibility of ensuring that the certificate pro they carry does not indicate okay. 
uh, yeah. but they are they got their degrees through open and distance learning. But what are some of the challenges in ensuring the quality of these um, programs? Huh. Well, you see, ensuring quality of programs that where you even have face to face yeah. is quite herculean. They're not to talk of ensuring quality for the open and distance learning. First, the learning materials. A lot of emphasis is put in in ensuring that the Moodles that mm. they have is standardized. It goes through the, um, uh, what do you call it now, the tiny thing yeah. uh, through which you check plagiarism and all that. So we do that. Then you also ensure that they attend lectures. The online platform has uh, provisions through which the software monitors attendance and how many times you've been able to hit the platform to ensure that those who are supposed to be having lectures online are the people who are actually having their lectures uh, in that uh, regard. Yeah. Um, just of recent, they have also launched an app in our own, which they call DLI Unilag app, through which you now gain access to such programs only through that app. And before you can have that app, you must log in with your username, mm -hmm. your matric number, and those details that will define you mm -hmm. as a student of the University of Lagos. Mm -hmm. Now, during exams, um, for those programs where they have to take in um, uh, computer-based tests and all that, mm -hmm. most of the systems that we use and the program that we use has been configured in such a way that it sh not only shows your picture as you're taking the exams, so as you log in with your matric number and your details, your picture pops up on the screen. Mm. So you can match the face of the fellow who is writing the exams mm. with the fellow who is supposed to be writing the mm. exams. Yeah. So um, essentially there are uh, ways and means through which will ensure quality mm. of those programs. Yeah. So our uh, last but one question then we leave you. Wanted to know, as the director of academic planning, what is your vision to improve quality education here in Unilag? Number one is uncompromising academic standards and excellent what? research output. In that regard, through the quality assurance and the um, Savicom unit of the university, we ensure that teaching and learning takes place effectively across all faculties and those things are monitored. And let me tell you, we have now introduced a biometric electronic um, uh, attendance management solution for capturing attendance at lectures. Mm. When you go, because of the very large classes that we have, sometimes we have challenges in yeah. taking attendance in class. So now, with the biometric solution which we have now introduced, all you need is to okay. ensure that you don't forget your finger at home <laughs> when you're coming to the class. <laughs> So with your finger, you're able to capture your attendance. Mm. And um, the students have found it very exciting. Even though we have some challenges in some respects because uh, of uh, issues of labor relations, you know, some people are also not too comfortable that uh, we are monitoring them in that regard. So that's one. Then secondly, we have what we call a mega monitoring, where you have the University Quality Assurance Unit okay. that goes around monitoring the various teaching and learning uh, uh, practices that are is going on across the entire university. So it's a very high-powered unit, that um, you know, high-powered committee that um, does that on behalf of uh, the university. So. Uh, what I'm saying is that in terms of vision, 
We want to see a university where we do not compromise what our academic standards. Yeah. We want to see a university where we produce excellent uh, research. Yeah. I want to see a university of Lagos where we have to now get our curriculum mm. to be relevant nationally as well as uh, globally. Okay. We also want to see a university where entrepreneurship and innovation is integrated into our curriculum such that we can produce students that will not only be looking for employment mm. but that will now be creators of job and they can now employ individuals on their own okay. and I think we'll get there yeah, so with all the collaborative efforts that we are having, yeah. a lot of efforts is going into that regard at the moment. Okay, so finally, um, how can the African universities position themselves to be relevant in this um, globalized world that we are in? We know we have, in Africa, mm -hmm. there are challenges. Uh, but I must say that um, there have been several initiatives to improve what you can call higher education in Africa. The, there's this program that we call uh, PASGA in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, you know, uh, a partnership for social and um, I can't remember the other words now, through which about 14 universities in Africa came together to run a master's degree in uh, um, public policy and research. And those have been standardized mm -hmm. across all those universities. They receive training. And University of Lagos is one of the uh, universities that is running that program at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're also aware of Arua. Yeah. Uh, that uh, has its own headquarters again in Ghana. Yeah. Those are ways and means of ensuring that you have research intensive uh, universities. Now the Association of African Universities is also doing a lot in that regard to improving the quality of uh, higher education in Africa. The PAKWAC, AFRICAN, and all the various workshops that are held uh, every quarter in different uh, parts of uh, Africa are uh, ways and means of increasing the awareness in terms of quality assurance of our programs and in terms of the relevance of our curriculum uh, in uh, higher education. Mm -hmm. So first, I would rather say that any good university must ensure that you have a benchmark. Either you have the national standards benchmark, mm -hmm. but you can't compare yourself with yourself. Otherwise, you should look at some other international quotes, yeah. some great universities, and try to benchmark your own practices against what they are doing. Secondly, you should also, as a university, enlist to do the, what I'll call the involuntary quality assurance measures not necessarily the ones that are by law that you have to conform with, like the National Universities Commission or other regulatory agencies you have in other yeah. areas. But you should also elect, for instance, to go and take something like the AQRM yeah. and see how you're doing. Yeah. Those are ways and means of improving the quality of what you're doing. But in summary, mm. you must have good institutional governance starting from the council mm. to the management of the university there must be adequate provision of funds and those funds and funding must be there they will either be paid by the students or alternatively the government is uh, uh, that you have in whatever country should arrange to subsidize those payments and then bring in 
an environment through which students can access loans and scholarships to have access to uh, such education. The staff must be well trained. The quality of the students is also key and very paramount. So, and therefore, you must ensure that your admission and enrollment processes are not compromised. So you can get good quality students with good quality lecturers and the right environment and infrastructural facilities, the sky is your limit. And Africa will get there as uh, we have all envisioned to have the best for our children. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much for the time you spent with us. If you just tune in, this is AU Talks and you can watch it on our YouTube page, Association of African Universities, on our Facebook page, Association of African Universities. Thank you for staying tuned.